All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Hope you all are having a good day so far. So, the United States men's basketball team won gold, and so did the women. Um, boy, was it close, though. Um, throughout the entire tournament, I have been saying it the whole time, like, Steph Curry keeps saving us. Steph keeps saving us, man, you know? But, oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I was really worried there. I thought we were going to lose. But we won, so congratulations, men. Congratulations, women. Um, congratulations, France uh, and Serbia, for getting your uh, silver and bronze. Well played. Well played. You gave us a run for our money. Serbia, especially you guys, my God, you kind of deserve that win. Uh, we were down by 17 for the majority of the game, and we just came back at the very end. To, to beat you but anyways um i had a request to check out a video specifically from uncut hoops this is uh this is called steph curry saves captain lamerica so um apparently he saw what i saw because that's what i was seeing the whole tournament was like steph is just saving saving the day and when i saw that lebron won the olympic mvp that just like added fuel to the fire. I got to tell you the truth. But all right, without further ado, let's check this out. Uh, I'm going to link the original video as always down below if you want to check it out without me. And um, yeah, let's do this. The game MVP was Joel Embiid, but the comeback MVP was Captain America. LeBron James was the MVP. But if you're... Who won that game for them? Which one? Yeah. What, why? Why? LeBron. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Y'all absolutely Braun won that game for them. That's the story of my life. No respect, 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 no respect. I'm just uh, quite here to get some respect. Okay. L like I told my friends, it went from Dwayne Wade to Chris Bosh to, to Ray Allen to, to Kevin Love to Kyrie to AD. And now it's Steph. Steph is getting a taste. He, he now he, I'm sure he now understands that no matter how much you do, if you're in a game with LeBron James, he's going to get all the freaking credit. Discussing the history of basketball, there's tons of talented players, high skill players who could pass, shoot, rebound, who could do it all. But looking at each era, there's really only a select few players from every era who not only were highly <laughs> talented, but were box office must see TV and could light you up on any given night. Now, Steph is one of a kind, man. I've been saying it the whole time. He's one of a kind. Now, of course, Steph nowadays, he's 36 years old. Not really at his apex, his peak, or his absolute prime, but still a phenomenal player. And like we saw versus France in the Olympics, this guy time and time again turns back the clock and puts on a show. And in the fourth quarter versus France in a nail-biting game, what does Steph Curry do in the final three minutes? 12 points, 4 of 4 shooting, all the shots being threes, one steal, and was a plus 11. I think that tells you the story right there. Who won the game for us? I'm sorry, I'm saying us. I, I live in the United States. Who won the game for the United States? Huh? Who? <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? And looking outside of Steph, his teammates, they counted for only four points and one made field goal. Long story short, Steph in the fourth quarter carried this team to a victory and bailed out everyone. Yep. And the crazy thing for Steph, 48 hours earlier, did the exact same thing versus Serbia. Yeah. And versus France, somehow topped that. I mean, these two fourth quarters from Steph, absolute brilliance and an all-time performance. And looking at Steph in both games combined in the final three minutes, here's what he put up. 19 points, made every shot, every three, Good two Lord. steals, and was a plus 17. You want to talk about clutch? Steph has always had it. There's people who debate it and don't think he has it. Clutch isn't just the last shot. It's everything that leads up to that last shot. And Steph has it, man. Steph has it. He's the one, who's, he's the one who dominated the uh, 2010s. I keep saying it. It was not LeBron James. It was not LeBron James. Who count the rings, you know? Compared to the entire USA roster in both those games in the final three minutes, live in points, made field goals, made threes, and plus minus. Again, Steph in both these games was absolutely flawless, and Team USA needed him to be that to win these games by razor thin margins. 
And one thing I do have to address, kind of the elephant in the room, despite Steph's great play in these two games, really clinching gold for the team, he did not win the MVP of the tournament, and that, of course, went to LeBron James, the queen from Akron. It's outrageous, <laughs> egregious, preposterous. Seinfeld. So when discussing the quote-unquote Olympic MVP, I didn't know this existed. I didn't know this existed either. I'm glad. I actually had to Google it, and it turns out this is the third or fourth time it's ever been done. And it's so weird that they would do it on a... a, at a it's so weird they would give it to somebody like LeBron James when we all know it was Steph Curry. So if it was something that was a close race, let's just pretend like this was a close race. Don't give it to anybody then. You've only done it like three or four times ever. So why are we doing this? Of course, because it's freaking LeBron James. So we got to do it. We got to give him more. We got to give him more accolades. It wasn't even a thing until about three days ago. And apparently, it really hasn't been a thing for the majority of the Olympics. Yeah. As in history, only three times. Three times. Has a player won this award. Mine went 04, Katie in 2021, and of course LeBron now in 2024. Not really deserving. And here's the thing I'm kind of perplexed by. Steph in the two biggest games, two most crucial games, was the team's best player, most clutch player, and most impactful player. If you're going to talk MVP, shouldn't the biggest games, biggest moments, factor in the most to that award. I would think so. And looking at Steph versus LeBron in the final two games, again, it's pretty clear Steph was better in the biggest moments. Yep. As in those games, 30 points, 5 boards, 4 assists, 20 made shots, 17 made threes, was a plus 40, and efficiency-wise, was at 30.0. I, I also, I mean, first of all, absolutely phenomenal. But I also hear, like, so I, I get some pushback sometimes when I say Curry dominated the 2010s. Um, okay. Here's how you break, here's how you break the tie. is head-to-head matches. So in the finals, and I'm just not even going to say, I'm just going to let you guys figure it out. Because in the finals, they, Curry and LeBron have met many times in the finals. What's the record? Who beat who more often? So that's the tiebreaker right there. Now, LeBron in the two games, yeah, had some nice numbers. 15 points, 10 assists, 8 boards, 12 made shots, 3 made threes, and it was a plus 31. I mean, LeBron's stats, they are pretty damn good stats. But compared to Steph, it's pretty obvious. One guy popped off for 30. The other guy had kind of a Jason Kidd triple-double, which is nice, but not amazing. And if you want to say those numbers right there, it's a wash, it's even. Let's say that for the sake of argument. So how would you break that tie? Well, look at the big time yeah. fourth quarter moments. And doing that, Steph once again has a massive edge. As in the fourth quarter versus France, what did this guy do? 12 points, 4 or 5 shooting, 4 threes, 1 turnover, was a plus 6. This is just like in the NBA Finals, everybody. This is just the same way that always goes. LeBron doesn't do crap at, at, at the end. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, he did. He produced four turnovers. That's pretty LeBron good. LeBron versus France, two points, one made shot, four turnovers almost cost in the game, and was a plus three. Where you at? <laughs> in the bathroom. Somebody opened a window. And I'm sure you guys know this. ESPN, Fox Sports, the mainstream sports media, it's all LeBron James 24-7, 365. So how are they going to spin this? Yeah, you know, Steph played good in the fourth quarter, but LeBron in the first quarter set the tone. He was leader, the glue guy. Who did the small things? No, Steph set the tone in the first quarter. He was lights out. The game MVP was Joel Embiid, but the comeback MVP was Captain America. When he's on the floor, dying for loose balls, taking charges, getting rebounds, because we were getting out rebounded most of the game. But when he's doing the little things and the dirty work, that is a trickle effect down to everyone. And that energy boosts everyone to get back into the game and not lose confidence. Obviously, Steph kept him in the game. KD hit a dagger down the stretch. But the Captain America led the charge in the comeback. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't even get it. What an idiot. I don't even get it. This is why I don't know. Sometimes I, I get a request in the comments to react to something that Nick Wright said, and I just say no. Because, like, uh, I'm not watching this. Like, I don't want to feed into that. It's, it's complete just horse crap. It's, it's not real media. It's not news. You know, this is fake. It's pretend. 
So turning off that idiocy, let's say you know the fourth quarter, it isn't everything. Well, even with that being said, Steph for serving the first quarter, set the tone from the jump, yep. and kept USA alive. As the end of the first quarter, it was 31-23 in Serbia's favor. Now for Team USA, there's 23 points. Steph Curry had 17 of them. Shooting-wise, missed two shots, and from three, had five makes. The rest of the team had a six points total, one of seven from the field, and one of three from deep. The only reason this game was close, even competitive, and USA had a chance for a comeback was because of Steph Curry yep. in the first quarter, keeping them in the game. 100%. And here I hope some people out there are, are, will stop bashing Steph. Like, at, at some point, I think he's proven himself. You know, he's not toxic. He's not, like, throwing players under the bus. He doesn't complain to the refs all the time. He's not out there flopping around. He doesn't get his teammates fired. He doesn't get his coaches fired. He's done all of this on one team. The guy's for real. The guy's legit. He deserves some respect. The kicker, Steph, in this game, Bang. didn't just start it, also closed it. Yeah, he did. As in the fourth quarter and the final three minutes, had seven points, the dagger three, and the game icing free throws. And here's the most damning graphic of all. In the games versus Serbia and France in the final three minutes, here's Steph versus LeBron and their overall play. Steph Curry, 19 points, 100% in the field, 100% from three, and was a plus 17. LeBron so James. So when it all counts, these are the final two games of the Olympics. Do you see the difference? Had two points, one and two shooting, zero made threes, and was a plus 14. <laughs> 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 what this award came down to in essence was LeBron's play versus lesser opponents. Teams like Puerto Rico, Brazil, you know, they're fine, but they're no juggernauts. If you want to talk MVP, to me what it means is performance versus the best teams. Teams like Serbia, France, Germany, even Canada, the top tier teams, how do you play versus them? If I had a vote, it's Steph 1, Jokic 2, couldn't care about the rest of them. And one more thing I do want to touch on, speaking of the media, you have someone like Paul George, an active player, saying LeBron James, not Steph Curry, was leader of the comeback versus Serbia in the semifinals. But if you're, wh who won that game for them? Which Bron. play? Bron, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah, absolutely Bron won that Tell game. Tell him, Trey. <laughs> like, I think Bron took it as the initiative of like, we not losing this game. Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. If someone asks why PG has zero championship rings, just play that clip form. It's self-explanatory. And here's the thing. If LeBron had 36 points, made nine threes, carry a team like that, what would the narrative be? You know, the greatest of all time, the GOAT. We've never seen anyone like this in the Olympics. That'd be the narrative. But Steph drops 36, carries the team. What is it? Well, you know, actually it was Steph, MB, KD, and LeBron all in junction. Yep. Welcome to being a teammate of LeBron James. You get zero credit. Zero credit. And history is not going to remember that you were this badass. No matter how many videos people like us make about it, the narrative is already there. And history is going to remember this as LeBron James led Team USA and he won the MVP and yada yada, and he's the reason that we won. We all knew this was going to happen. We talked about it. There's a reason why I wasn't talking about this during the Olympics. We already talked about it, and we all pretty much agreed. If we win, he's going to take all the credit. If we lose, then he's going to blame shift somebody else like Steph or Steve Kerr. Uh, Steve Kerr and Embiid, between the two of them, the narrative was already being like kind of set in case we lose. You know, that whole like preemptive um, lay down the excuse for losing, basically, um, before it happens. Premeditated uh, excuse, whatever. But this is what it's like when you play with LeBron James. Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Kevin Love, Kyrie, AD. None of those guys get any credit. Zero credit. And it's complete horseshit. Not just Steph. I mean, the narratives are nauseating. You guys know it even with the Lakers. If Anthony Davis goes off, it's AD and LeBron. LeBron goes off, AD plays suspect. Uh, LeBron James carried this team unstoppable. There it is. The narrative's 
they never end. And looking past the awful media narratives, I went on a light note. Steph this year in 2024 had his Kobe 08 moment. Yeah, and he USA did. USA needed him most. He stepped up at the big shots and came through for his country. Did he get the MVP, the accolades, the overall stats? No, not really. When it mattered most, who came through and who hit the big time memorable shots? Steph, as well as Kobe, and that's all that matters. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Yeah, good, good stuff, Uncut. Good stuff. You saw exactly what I saw. You feel exactly how I feel about this issue. Oh, man. You know, it's like I wasn't surprised at all um, when I heard they gave him the MVP and the narrative was shifting that, like, LeBron accomplished this. I wasn't surprised, but... Of course, disappointed. Just because here we go again. A guy goes out there and, and and puts a team on his back and wins it for wins it for his team. But LeBron gets all the credit. It's just sad at this point. I just want this dude to retire. I want it to be over with because there's so many awesome basketball players out there that should be talked about as, instead of this freaking anti goat LeBron James. You know, like it's he. So many other players deserve some some attention, especially in a situation like this, you know. But we saw it in the playoffs last year too. Even though you know LeBron got his ass whooped in the first round of the playoffs, they still kept talking about him. They still kept talking about him all the way through, all the way through the playoffs. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyways, everybody, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts were. Who do you think the real MVP was? And uh, yeah, chime in. Let's have a conversation about it, all right? Okay. Peace out, everybody. Please leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content. Check out Uncut Hoops. And yeah, I'm out of here, man. I feel like I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Peace out.